Hello, and welcome to The Backstory. My name is Tim Waters, and as a volunteer for Longmont Public Media, I host this program, which is an opportunity for Longmonters to learn more about what's going on in your town. And today, uh, we have two guests who are, who are familiar to viewers of The Backstory, and certainly familiar to all of Longmonters uh, as two members, senior members of the city management team. Jim Golden, our chief financial officer, and Dale Rademacher, who is the deputy city manager. And our topic today is one that should be familiar to Longmonters, Costco, and Costco's corporate decision to expand to Longmont, uh, which we'll put this in, in a time frame in just a second. Um, but it's a conversation that's been under, underway for a while. It's had some new visibility just recently because of actions of the city council, but it does tee up now kind of an accelerated pace of visible activity. And for long monitors who are curious about, and I, and I know I get this question a lot as uh, with another hat on, uh, what's the timeline and when are we gonna see Costco and when do we get a chance to start shopping there? So this will answer, I think, virtually every question that's out there. And if not, uh, you know how to get in touch with these two fellows or others in the city if you have questions, if you wanna follow on. So to both Jim and Dale, thank you for, I'm gonna thank you now. I'm gonna thank you again at the end of this, both for your time today and, and the remarkable work you do on behalf of the residents of Longmont. I hope people appreciate, I'm guessing they do, but appreciate just what, what you two and your colleagues uh, give to this town uh, in terms of your expertise and your expertise, a lifetime of service uh, to Longmont. So thanks for all that. This project has been in the works for uh, coming up almost on, a, on two years. As I recall, we did the first episode of a backstory, I think in early November of 2021, as the council was about to make a decision, but that was following actually months of kind of preliminary work, right? So give, us the, yeah, give us, the, give us the, the short history of this and how we, where we started and how we got to where we are and where we are right now. So I'll, uh, I'll start off and I'm sure Jim can uh, fill in some of the blanks, but um, actually the, uh, you know, the city began um, being involved in the, in the effort back in 2020 and um, possibly even before that. Middle uh, of 19. 2019, right. And at the, at the time, Costco was um, interested in moving to the Longmont market and they were uh, 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 trying to find a, a good location to do that on. And um, there were uh, a number of uh, areas that were considered uh, in, in that process. And uh, the city um, really got sort of um, heavily involved in it um, as it was moving forward. And um, um, together with the property owner uh, brought forward the, the, this property, uh, the current site, which is just east of the Harvest Junction commercial development on uh, East Ken Pratt Boulevard. And um, so the city and property owner, this was really been sort of a, 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 a uh, um, the classic public private partnership where uh, private property owners, Costco and the city have come together uh, to craft a, uh, a, uh, a, an agreement. And that, that, that agreement city council did act on in, in December of 2020. Uh, when they approved the, uh, we'll refer to it as the, the P3 agreement, but it was a public-private partnership. Um, and in that agreement, it laid out, laid out uh, you know, the different uh, roles and responsibilities of the city and Costco and, and, and the uh, developer, who, who is um, Reggie Golden, is the owner. Uh, the, the company he's working it through is Diamond G uh, uh, Concrete. Um, and in that agreement, there was, um, the city had several interests in mind. First and foremost, of course, was, was um, landing and getting a Costco um, warehouse here in Longmont, as opposed to having it located in one of our neighboring cities. And then secondly, we, we also have uh, a large community need and interest uh, in, in the affordable housing area. And so those were our two primary focus uh, areas going into the project. And, um, and we were able to uh, craft an agreement that um, provided uh, about 17 acres for Costco uh, to come in and, and build their, their warehouse at, and then uh, also an additional nine acres 
for the city to use in the future for um, uh, affordable housing needs in our community. As part of that, there's a cost sharing of, of the public improvements. And those were based upon the acreages uh, between the acres uh, in the city's column, which were the 17 acres for Costco and the nine acres for affordable housing, about 26 acres. Um, and then about 22.66 acres that were being retained by, um, by the private property owner. And so that was the ratio uh, that was used then uh, to split the costs for the, uh, the public improvements, meaning the streets, the utilities, um, all that type of work, as well as um, to um, um, allocate those costs back into the city um, um, uh, as, you know, as, as, as a partner in the project. Um, Costco was also bringing um, originally about $6.16 million to the table to go towards the costs associated with the private site development costs, things like building the parking lots and the utilities on their 17 acre site. Uh, the city was called on to back that up with up to $3 million in the, in the event that the cost went above 6.16. Um, and all of that was sort of uh, memorialized in, in the P3 agreement back in 2020. Um, and so that's sort of the background. You know, and, and the property, even going before Costco, it was annexed into the city as part of the Irwin Thomas annexation uh, several years ago. Uh, it was a very large annexation of several parcels into the city. And um, it was slated to be um, the entire area to be gravel mine. Um, and, a, a, and, and part of what this project is also doing is, is revising that, that uh, PUD on, on the property, uh, removing, uh, eliminating, if you will, uh, reducing the amount of area that's gonna be gravel mined um, and essentially pushing that mining activity further to the east, uh, further to the east of the apartments that are out there as well as the single family home. So that was a long answer, but Jim, there's a lot. You add? How could I add anything to that? <laughs> there's a lot going on with the project. So, just I want to come circle back just on a couple of points um, uh, to, to to reiterate: this land was going to be gravel mined. This property, there yeah. still may be some gravel mining east of what is what's going to be developed. But as people think about land use and what's the best and highest use of that land, the alternative to a Costco was gravel mining. So people need to just kind of contemplate that. You also made reference to locating in Longmont versus other municipalities. What should people know when, when Costco in particular or corporations in general look to expand? Um, are, are, do they have a single location in mind or are they are looking at a range of options in addition to what they finally settle on uh, with, in this case, with this 17 acres or part of this combination, this public-private partnership in Longmont? So maybe I'll try it that one. So, you know, with, with Costco, they were, um, you know, they have, they have locations in uh, Superior and Thornton and Timnath. So pretty much those are their three closest locations to Longmont, uh, which aren't necessarily uh, that close for Longmont shoppers. But I think what Costco is looking at is, is their areas that they're serving and we're and identifying where they may be not reaching customers as well as in other areas. And they know who their customers are from the data they have from folks making their purchases with credit cards and such. So they did have an intention to be somewhere in this area. Um, they were certainly taking interest in the fact that Longmont has grown to a size where we have a pretty good population base here. But we're also in a location that's that's central to, to meeting some other areas that they are possibly not serving to the west of us, uh, even to the north of us and to the east of us. And so they were going to locate somewhere in the general vicinity. It didn't necessarily need to be within Longmont though. And so we did know that what we were uh, dealing with is a potential of a Costco either being built in Longmont or being built near Longmont. 
And if it's being built near Longmont and not within the city limits, then that's a totally different uh, sales tax revenue situation for the city. And, and that's something we, we could not uh, really see happen. We had to, to make sure that that took place here within the city limits. So when, you, when, when any municipality, Longmont in particular, has an opportunity to work with a corporation to do this kind of expansion, and there are competing venues, uh, it's not always that you calculate potential losses along with gains. But in this case, sounds like the calculus required also the analysis of what do we lose? If this Costco locates one mile to the east of city of our eastern city limit or boundary, as opposed to one mile west, those implications are pretty significant in terms of the economics, the economic impact in Longmont. Is that fair? Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, even having a Costco uh, locate here in Longmont is going to certainly have an impact on businesses that already exist here in Longmont, that they will potentially lose some sales. Uh, for the city, that's going to just distribute it from one entity that's in the city to another entity within the city, and we would still receive that revenue. But if it's a mile outside the city of Longmont, like you referred to, then those businesses are still going to lose that business because Longmont residents are now, instead of shopping at current retailers, are potentially going to go a mile outside the city because they prefer to, to shop at a Costco, and we would lose significant sales tax revenue. Yeah. I know as Costco customers, my wife and I, uh, and we do, we frequent the Costco in Thornton. Every time I leave, I think, gosh, this is sales tax that could be going to Longmont. Uh, but I, we don't, it's not that we don't shop locally. We do a lot of business in town. And I, I don't imagine having a cut for us, having a Costco in closer proximity means we shop there more or we shop any less in our local businesses. It simply is a convenience. Uh, and actually in terms of the environment for all of the narrative there is about environmental impacts in some ways, um, the beneficial effect is fewer of us are driving those miles right, to, uh, to Thornton or Temneth or Superior, or wherever you might be shopping in a Costco. So um, the, the land would have been used for gravel mining had it not been used for Costco, had it been located just outside our city limits, there would have been this, this sucking sound, right, of, oh. of tax revenues leaving Longmont as opposed to staying in Longmont. Just talk, drill down some more on the economics of it. Um, there was a, a pro, there was a cost allocated to this early on. That's the decision the city council just recently made added to the funding for this. So you might ex just explain why all that represents and maybe parse it this way. Dale kind of give us that update. And then Jim, you, you have specific responsibility to oversee city investments and returns on investments. And, and you concluded this is a pretty good investment as opposed to just a cost. And so it'd be interesting to get your take on from your financial expertise, kind of what does that investment look like? What are the, re, the schedule of returns and both short-term when whatever debt we accept or cost, uh, when are those covered? And then what does it look like over the long run? But Dale, bring us up to date on why did the city, have, city council have to make an adjustment to the funding for this? And you, you might also just talk about why does a, an outfit as big as Costco why do they want cities or need cities to be bringing money to the table anyway? They got, they have lots of money. Why do they need us to have skin in this game? So just uh, quickly, the you know the uh, uh, the reason the costs uh, changed on the project were um, uh, really no different than what all of us are seeing out in the marketplace right now. Um, there is a, an increased level of uh, inflation overall in the overall economy. Um, Probably more acutely, though, in, in the construction industry, several things are in play, uh, both an increase in the cost of, of everything from PVC pipe to uh, steel, um, coupled together with supply uh, train uh, interruptions that um, have really driven up um, uh, the costs, especially when we have such a uh, sort of a, a vibrant construction uh, industry going on right now uh, along the entire region in, in the front range of Colorado. And 
you know, arguably in many areas across the country. And so you put all that together, uh, the natural outcome is uh, uh, classic supply and demand where uh, prices are gonna go up. And so uh, it's, we're not immune to that. And, and what we've uh, done since 2020, when the council originally approved the agreement is we've now received the actual construction bids uh, from uh, contractors that um, have really sort of drilled down to a, a far deeper uh, a level of uh, review and analysis to arrive at those uh, construction costs. Uh, that, that, uh, those costs are the ones that we are um, now included in our uh, project estimates while still keeping a, a contingency uh, in there because um, this, this, uh, this project is gonna take anywhere from 12 to 18 months to build. Um, from from the, the time we start until the time uh, the store is opened. And during that time, uh, you can run into construction issues that uh, uh, raise the cost. You can also run into additional uh, cost uh, inflationary issues that happen. So we believe we should be in pretty good shape with the contingencies that we have, which are about 10% of, of, of those uh, bid amounts. And so... Um, you know, the next steps that we're going through are to, um, uh, we're working hard now, uh, given the council's action uh, recently at the council meeting to approve the appropriation of additional funds is to um, uh, complete uh, and prepare all the documents necessary to go to a closing. And those are everything from the, uh, um, the, um, uh, the escrow agreements to the uh, final plats of the property that, that need to be completed uh, in, in order for land to be sold and, and, and conveyed. So um, we're working hard to get to closing in the first half of February. And uh, it's our understanding and expectation that Costco will then give direction to the developer and contractor to commence with construction. Um, and, and then it's just a matter of uh, how Mother Nature treats us uh, <laughs> uh, in uh, February and March. As we all know, we tend to get a bunch of snow or not. So, but we're gonna be under construction. Um, and so people will start to see uh, some significant activity in the area. But, but Jim may wanna also talk further about some of the cost benefits and, and cost to the city and the payback periods. So, uh, Jim, just before we get started, so we should expect to see dirt moving by the end of March, depending on weather. And I, I, I think the end of March would be reasonable. Again, uh, if we're not under a foot of snow. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, under snow. Yeah. And as we're recording this, we're anticipating a big snowstorm in the next 36 hours. So, yeah. So, so, so I, I heard a number once in a once upon a time early in this discussion. That, that once all that's done, once Costco is ready to start going vertical, once the horizontal infrastructure's work uh, is finished, it takes them about 100 days to actually construct a warehouse. Is that about right? You're in the ballpark. Uh, that, that too has, has, has gotten a little bit longer, I believe, because of um, difficulties in obtaining materials. Yeah. Now about 130 days from the day that the developer turns over to Costco a pad-ready site that Costco will take to um, erect and open the building. That's pretty remarkable. That's yeah, amazing that they yeah. put it up in that short of time frame. So Jim, talk about the, the economics of it and kind of investments and returns on investments and long-term forecasts. Sure, I will. But I will say that uh, um, if, even though we're expecting a snowstorm within 36 hours, I think, you know, this is Colorado. So by the time most people see half, half the people see this, that snow will be gone, right? So It should be melted. That's right, it's Colorado. Uh, so as far as this is an investment, I, I believe I can safely say that, that Costco would be by far our largest um, retail sales generator in the city. We've got sales projections uh, from Costco, uh, and we believe that they're reasonable based on what we know other uh, area cow nearby Costco's have uh, generated. So we're projecting that in the first year of operation, this Costco uh, would generate over $4 million of sales tax to the city. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, some sales will be transferred from elsewhere in the city. We call that cannibalization. 
and we realize and acknowledge that. Um, we're, we're projecting that the city would still net over $3 million on uh, net of cannibalization of, of new sales tax in the first year. That's a rough estimate and we could be wrong in either direction, but still it's a significant amount of new sales tax. And so we think that that's a, a pretty strong investment for the city. Um, and, and really the reason why we think there's so much new sales tax is what we were talking about uh, is that Longmont residents currently travel to other Costco's to, to shop currently. But in addition to that, uh, Long, uh, by Longmont uh, having its Costco uh, here, locating here in the city, it would draw shoppers from outside of Longmont that are not maybe currently shopping here in Longmont. So that's a, that's a key part as well of, of bringing this development into the city is not just what it generates, but what it, what it could bring with it maybe as other Retail might open around it that isn't currently located here in Longmont. And plus the folks that might come into Longmont that aren't shopping now, but would come here to shop at a Costco. Um, yep. So we, we did make those estimates and, and the, the hard costs for uh, the, the Costco portion of this project, just separating out the affordable housing part of this uh, the, the Costco hard costs are $10.86 million with our current estimates. And so we are estimating that we would recover the gross sales tax, with gross sales tax, we would recover that amount within 28 months of opening. Uh, and then if we just look at net sales tax, can, backing out the cannibalized portion, it would be recovered within 43 months of opening. So we think that's a pretty good investment because over over the long term, um, the city could see over $90 million of sales tax from a Costco in, in over the next 20 years. And, and uh, that would be uh, $73 million uh, net of, of, the, um, of the cannibalization. So those are big dollars that can really go a long ways here for the city. And I, and I don't want to, I won't, oh, I don't want to overstate this, <clears throat> which I'm prone to do. Uh, but but listeners should know, uh, Jim Golden, like other chief financial officers, gets paid to be conservative. There aren't very many chief financial officers who last as long as he has in any organization uh, with, with being um, anything other than balanced and a bit conservative in their estimates. Uh, that's their job. That's his job. Um, Costco folks are less conservative when they do their forecasting. So I won't say the numbers. Uh, for fear that that you know raises too many expectations, but long monitors should know uh, that what Jim just shared was probably the most conservative forecast or estimate of what those net revenues, sales tax revenues, would look like to Longmont over the next twenty years. And, and if you guys could kind of tag team, put that in a in the context, twenty years in a municipality like Longmont, where we are twenty years from now, we've we've forecasted build out in Longmont, meaning residential kind of getting to the to the limits of our of our residential uh, capacity or you know space use, use utilizations of land in the year i think 2035 that's what the envision longmont a master plan forecast i think is built up by around 2035 and i think the original build out was like 116,000 residents and maybe with density we get to 125,000 but somewhere in that range but over that 20 year period of time, we're gonna to start to see fewer homes built, I would guess. We need to see homes built right now for our housing crisis, but over time. And as that declines, as residential construction declines, that has a huge impact on a city's budget, does it not? Yeah, it does. I mean, we, uh, you know, in, in my career, it's, we've only seen a, a growing retail base. And so uh, it's not something that we've had to deal with except in periods of time when the economy has slowed dramatically. But when that does occur, we have very tight budgets. Uh, it, it becomes a, a, a problem to be able to um, allocate resources for all the various services that the, that the city is providing. So what it's really critical, I think, looking ahead Head that we have those type of core retail uh, that is is going to be you know over there 
there in the long term, the type of retail that that doesn't suffer through even like the pandemic that we just uh, have gone through over the last few years, but in the worst part of that pandemic, this type of retail actually thrived. And I think Longmont has, has, has been able to benefit in a period like that because of the fact that its retail is of the core type of uh, necessary uh, purchases versus some of the frill type stuff you might see in a regional mall. And, and being dependent on that type of revenue is not always consistent uh, throughout different economic cycles. I just think Longmonters, um, I mean, part of the story here, this is Longmont, the backstory is all about storytelling. Part of the story is what this looks like, not just today, but as you, as you not just the financial forecast, but in the context of other economics in a municipality like this, as you start to reach build out and making good decisions today that position the city well for 2035 and, and, and beyond in terms of uh, continuity of, of revenues. Um, I know that, <clears throat> Dale, you mentioned the 17 acres on which the Costco site will sit. Um, there's the nine acres the city has purchased or is purchasing uh, for the development of housing. Uh, that leaves some other acreage. You mentioned uh, t another 26 or so, 22 acres uh, to be developed. Uh, and I understand this is, I'm asking you to do some speculation, um, but there, there, but what would you, is there speculation you're willing to do about what you might see in terms of other development around a Costco? Cause that's, that's what we see around Costco's, right? That Costco and other businesses know where those synergies are and, and which would like to be in close proximity to a box store, like a Costco or a warehouse, like a Costco. So I, I, I don't know that we are aware of any uh, specific um, um, uh, entity that might come in, but there are a number of uh, commercial pad sites that are um, being uh, developed and platted as part of the, the overall effort here. And um, I, I believe what you see around other Costco's are um, uh, complementary types of, of uh, businesses. Um, uh, could be restaurants that 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 will come in that uh, you know people like to shop and then like to go out to eat uh, close to where they are. Um, could be other types of uh, industries that uh, or, or businesses I should say um, that don't compete necessarily with Costco, but but um, sort of have a synergy with them. Um, I'm confident that they are going to be very attractive. Um, uh, commercial sites, uh, given the sort of that regional draw that that comes with a Costco, and and um, I would anticipate that there's uh, going to be a bit of competition on on who uh, uh, is is uh, uh, finally uh, uh, purchases and, and and acquires those sites and builds on them. So, um, you know, it's hard to speculate, but I don't believe any of our financial models, and I'll have Jim clarify me. Are necessarily relying on additional um, uh, sales tax coming in from those development pads, um, but it's reasonable to expect that uh, that will be occurring um, probably not long after uh, the Costco warehouse is open itself. So, Jim, I will put you on the spot to speculate. I appreciate your willingness to go that far, Dale. But we're, but you are talking about an ecosystem, an economic kind of financial ecosystem that begins to develop around a facility um, like a Costco warehouse. And uh, I just think that's part of the story and long monitors stay tuned. I think there's some, um, uh, will be some pretty interesting and exciting opportunities to develop around this. Let's assume we fast forward, uh, I don't know, we get past March. Um, there have been supply chain issues. We, you, you know, labor costs go up. Let's assume at some point in the future, Jim, Costco says, well, we're overextending ourselves, right? We're we're not, we're not going to open doors to this Costco. Um, you know, it's time for us to focus on something else. Um, is the city left holding the bag on, we've put, a, you know, the city's made an investment here. What, what, does the, what are the city's options if Costco were to take steps backward, which we don't anticipate, but I know that's a question out there. Well, you know, the, the uh, P3 agreement that, that Dale has referred to between the city and the Costco and the developer, 
includes some uh, clawback provisions. They address um, the various failure scenarios uh, that any time after closing takes place. And all the way up until um, about five years after the opening of Costco. And, and under each one of them, either one or both of the parties would be required to reimburse the city for its sunken cost if there is some sort of failure scenario. And I, I Dale probably even has more specific detail that he could add to that if that's of interest. So even sure. if it gets built and gets, gets constructed and the doors open and then they close a year later, the, the city's not at risk. Exactly. As Jim was saying, uh, the, the P3 agreement has uh, three to four sort of key scenarios. Um, you know, the, the, let's say the agreement goes south uh, before Costco ever uh, breaks ground. Well, then there are certain costs that the city will, uh, would get back. Could be the costs associated with the, the property acquisition. Uh, again, depending on whether or not any costs have been expended towards the public improvements. But all along the way, there's protection and Costco is the protector, if you will, where they are uh, legally obligated to reimburse the city for sunk costs. Ultimately, the, the, the highest sunk cost that we've uh, recalculated as part of this, the uh, site agreement that we entered into with Costco, I think uh, puts that number somewhere around 11.2 million. And, um, and again, that would be in the event that uh, we make it all the way to opening. In other words, all the money has been expended, uh, but they either don't open or they don't stay open uh, for at least five years. And so, um, you know, no agreement is perfect and, and, and no agreement is without its own risk. Uh, but this is one that um, uh, I, I think is, is structured in a, in a way that will, um, uh, pr both protect the city um, as well as um, uh, make it uh, advantageous for all parties to move as expeditiously as they can uh, to get to an open store situation. And so uh, we tried to build that in to the uh, strategy of the overall agreement. So when a corporation or the staff or our partners, like the Longman Economic Development Partnership, bring an opportunity to the city to attract, in this case, a Costco, could be other, other businesses or corporations. Uh, part of the calculus that the city does uh, is based on um, benefits, not just to the corporation, and not, not just in terms of sales tax, but multiple, how dollars multiple uh, turnover in multiple times in the, in the community. What are some of the collateral benefits for for a long while what in terms of the criteria that you would consider uh the numbers of jobs the compensation levels how employees are treated not just in costco i mean this is you could generalize this to others but this is in relationship to costco what are the what are the other benefits that we'll see to longmont and to longmonters and to the surrounding area um when costco gets open so that's a good that's a good question well jim do you want to go first go ahead you know, I think in general, uh, what I would say that that we think, uh, you know, first of all, all Longmont citizens would 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 benefit from the, the revenue stability that that Costco would provide, because you know, sales tax is is our primary source of revenue, and and it funds things like public safety, uh, library, museum, senior services, youth services, and then uh, we we also have. Um, voter designated sales tax going for open space and streets as well. So um, those, of course, are, are things that, that uh, uh, the community benefits by. And of course, the, the affordable ho housing project once developed would also benefit Longmont residents. So there, there are uh, certainly benefits in that respect. I don't, I don't have job data or um, spinoff revenues to, to throw at you. I don't have any of that, but certainly there would be that, be that. And probably within, let's say, the Harvest Junction area itself, you might see some more business come in in that area as well uh, um, to fill holes in that space because just of the, the Costco opening nearby. The synergy that that creates. Right. Dale, were you going to add to that? 
I, I was going to add, you know, we, we don't talk about it a lot, but, um, you know, Costco is known in the industry as a, as an employer that uh, um, uh, takes pretty good care of their employees. And so uh, there are a number of uh, jobs uh, coming to the area. And I think it's important for the city to have a whole mix of jobs, right? That, that, our, uh, that our folks are qualified to do and uh, uh, eligible to, to compete for. I um, also understand that there's you know, quite a bit of longevity in a Costco employee. They tend to uh, hire in and then have some opportunities to move up through the company. And so I, I think we also look at that. You know, that's not necessarily a huge determining factor, but um, they, again, they're, they're, they're known as a, uh, a uh, corporation that um, um, treats their employees well. And any corporation or business that wants to, to partner with the city and take advantage of whatever incentives the city might make available, aren't they required to meet some thresholds in terms of compensation of their employees, like their wages need to be at least at the count, Boulder County median, um, which would be true for, for this Costco? I, I think that might be, and I'll let Jim know because he, he's more uh, or, or respond, but I think those tie in more when we are recruiting a primary employer. I think, I think the Costco project was um, the criteria it uh, was reviewed under uh, was tied more to the revenues that it was bringing to the city in the form of sales tax. And uh, you'll, you'll recall that uh, we did pass an ordinance that in order to say be eligible for a uh, reimbursement or a refund of, of some of the raw water costs that they have, they have to be a business that will generate, uh, I believe it's two and a half million dollars uh, of, of revenue back to the city in order to be eligible. Um, so it did get uh, scored on those kinds of criteria, but Jim, um, it, uh, other right. areas? It's yeah, and I think Dale really stated it correctly. There, it's uh, a, a section of the code that that you were referring to um, is about the primary employers and the incentives that go there. The, the majority of the city's dollars in this project are really from the sales tax dollars that in a sense were used to, to paying for these improvements. And none of that is really covered in, in that section of that code. Um, so I think Dale really covered the rest of it uh, that we are doing from other criteria, though. That, that's sort of the difference between a Costco project and, say, a Smuckers project. Where Smuckers came in as a large industry with hundreds of jobs, we definitely looked at and, and uh, looked at the uh, their, their pay scale for the variety of jobs there. Uh, so in, in, those in those cases, we want to make sure that they're uh, like 5% above the average of the county uh, living wage. Yeah. Uh, and all I'm saying is we did not make that measurement against the Costco project because it was an incentives that fell under that area of the code. I'm not saying that they don't meet that, but we haven't measured that. Right. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I'm, and I, and I, pro and I obviously <laughs> merged the two in my question. Uh, but we do going back to what we know about how Costco treats their employees and, and what their wages are. I, I'm confident that they would meet that criteria um, had that been part of the, the, the threshold they meet to, to, to be uh, eligible for any kind of an incentive program. Um, and just maybe one more, one more uh, comment on that, on the incentive um, that, that the city would bring through a public private partnership. Um, uh, does a Costco, when a Costco is considering, Costco in particular, considering moving to a, a municipality, do they locate in municipalities that won't, won't partner with them and have some skin in the game in terms of investment in the infrastructure required to make this happen? You know, I'm not going to, I'm going to speculate. I don't know the clear answer to that. I don't think in general that that would be the case unless they felt that they needed to locate in a certain community and they needed to be there for other reasons and whether they got something or not. So that, that may happen in, in some places. I don't think it's happening in Colorado though. Right. The ones, the ones that we have heard about, you know, certainly the Timnith uh, uh, store as well as the uh, store that's being built in um, the North Denver area. Uh, bo 
both have um, substantial economic incentives um, for them to be located there. And I just think for general consumption for citizens who don't understand, who have concerns or questions about how all that works, right. understand uh, if you're going to compete for a, an, an enterprise like this, um, your comp uh, other municipalities are willing to have skin in the game. And for those that are not, you have a chance to watch them uh, uh, progress with their own economic development efforts and, and create the kind of benefits for their for the residents that this one's going to create for us, for our residents. So anything we've missed in terms of up updating this chapter of the story, uh, if we get it all closed in February, we start to see potentially dirt moving in March. And then when would the doors open? Maybe if that's, all things go well. That's the one thing we probably haven't hit yet. And, um, you know, we're um, anticipating that it could be opening in the, uh, uh, the second half of 2023 um, um, in that um, late summer, uh, early fall. Uh, Costco does have criteria though. They will not open a store um, I, I believe it's any time after October and they will defer it then to the following March. And so ah. we are, um, our goal, our interest is to get this thing built and, and, and those doors open, uh, as soon as we can. So well, that's new information that there, that, that there's a dark period or quiet period from in terms of opening new warehouses. So I've, I've, when people have asked, what do you know about Costco? I've said, well, maybe you'll do your Christmas shopping there in 2023. Sounds like maybe they'll do their back to school shopping there in 2023. If we're lucky, you bet. All right. That's right. Fellows, if, is there anything else that you think Longmonters ought to know about this? All right. No, now? I, I appreciate the opportunity, Tim, to, um, uh, to, to get some additional information out into the community and, um, and, um, let Longmont folks know, uh, again, to the best of our understanding, how, how, it's, uh, how it's coming forward, so. And I just say that, you know, I know there's a lot of work has gone into this. Dale has probably lived this for two years now or something, but, uh, you know, I, 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 we feel real confident that we got the, the best deal possible um, in, in getting this uh, Costco here to the city. That there, when this first began, other locations, the cost was dramatically more, more than we've even been close to considering for this site. And so I, I think it's, it's going to be a good deal for the city. And, and I think I'd be remiss too, having worked with Costco as well as um, um, you know, Diamond G with Reggie Golden. Um, they have both been incredibly businesslike and, and um, have... Uh, uh, lived up to uh, their commitments and uh, to the city. And so um, that's always helpful as well. To have Those are the kind of people you, in, in organizations you want to work with. Strong partners. Who are trustworthy because they've earned your trust. Yep. Yeah. And, and I know Jim has recently uh, uh, consistently pointed out that he is not part of the Golden family. That is. <laughs> so that's, what does that make, that, right. make that easy for Jim? Uh, so uh, gentlemen, thanks again for your time today. And like I said earlier, thank you so much for what you've done for the city and its residents over such a long period of time. Um, this will be a fun part of your legacy. I mean, I know you're, there are many parts, many contributions and are, are, are part of that legacy, but this is gonna be a great big visible one that serves the community well for a long time. Longmonters, uh, the backstory is all about learning what's going on in your town from the people who are making it happen. And in this case, you heard from the two people who've been in the middle of this from the very beginning and are going to see it through and make certain it comes to a successful conclusion in Longmont. And that's the backstory on Costco and what comes next. <laughs>